Okay, okay let's go ahead. Great, thank you, Shaya. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so maybe I need to start again. Uh, so so thank, thank you, Dr. Osgood. Um, my case study work is incorporating the particle filtering and the system dynamic modeling in infectious transmission of measles and uh, pertussis. So let's first let's see the motivation. So firstly, uh, we know that the infectious disease have significantly influenced the health status of people throughout the world, especially currently under um, the COVID-19 era. So understanding the transmission of the and the outbreak patterns of uh, the infectious diseases can aid in forecasting and uh, projection and also help the public health agencies design the intervention strategies to prevent and control such disease. There are already some previous methods to do such kind of thing, but we have known that all of those previous methods have some essential set of shortcomings. So firstly, firstly, at the beginning, the epidemiologist and the scientist will um, use the surveillance data to trace and monitor the infectious disease transmission. But for the surveillance data, we know that those data are quite noisy. Um, so for example, for the surveillance data of the, like the daily reported cases, we know that for the daily reported cases, um, the category of the infectives who have been infected, but they choose self-isolated at home instead of um, going outside to seek help. We know that such category of people are not included in the reported cases of such similar data. So that's the we know that data is quite noisy. And secondly, if only use the surveillance data, we know that it is difficult to secure like a quanti a quantitatively rigorous insight into the future evolution, like to do the projections. And thirdly, we also know that to only use the surveillance data, it cannot be used to, uh, to investigate the, some counterfactuals research. And then, um, and then um, the scientists that have used another method is they have used the simulation models to, to research on the transmission and the, um, of the infectious disease. But, we, but for only use the simulation models, there are also some shortcomings. So for example, so firstly, we know that when we using the simulation models, uh, we often use the calibration process to estimate some parameters values. If those parameters value are difficult to generate in the real world or measured in the real world directly. But we know that those calibration process is typically undertaken on a one-time basis, which means it is difficult for a dynamic model to incorporate the ongoing arriving data by uh, using the calibration process to estimate some parameters values, um, incorporating the empirical data set like the seven list data. Secondly, um, we know that a dynamic model represents a simplified character realization of a processes in the real world. Thus, um, those simplification will usually omit, simplify, and then misestimate some factors. So for example, we know that in, in the uh, infectious disease models, we, we usually use uh, a constant parameter of the con contact rate to estimate and calculate the contacts between the infectives and the susceptibles. Um, usually the parameter of the contact rate is a, constant, is a constant parameter, which means it is a constant value. But we know that in the real world, the contact rate is, it should be usually changed. So for example, the contact rate among the children group the contact rate should be changed between the school days and the holidays. So, um, so, so, um, so, therefore, the simplifications and the, the sorry, it seems some is. Uh, 
Okay, the simplifications and the stochastics usually leads to some growing divergence between the model result and the, the uh, sorry, I, I, I just move here, um, the model and the, the real world. Okay, so in this research, what we will do is we seek to support a more accurate estimation and the, a projection um, dynamics for pertussis and measles. Um, what we will do this, we will apply the particle filtering algorithm to combine the system dynamic models and the empirical data together to compensate the weakness of the both side. Um, so for the empirical data set in this work, we have used the measles and the pertussis reported cases of uh, the province of Saskatchewan in the pre-vaccination era from 1921 to 1956. And we have two main categories of uh, such empirical data set. So the first category is we have the monthly reported cases across the whole population of the monthly reported measles and the monthly reported pertussis. And in the second category is we have the yearly reported cases in different six age groups. Okay, so firstly, let's see the measles model. So, so here, um, um, this plot just to show the structure of the state space model of the measles model that we have been used in the particle filtering model. So the structure, the structure one or the model one shows the aggregate population model. So for the measles aggregate population model, we simply, we, I think we already know that the state space model of the part of the particle filtering algorithm should be stochastic. So what we have done is we have added some system noise uh, to a deterministic SEIR model. So which means at the beginning, we have a deterministic SEIR model, and then we have added some noise to, to some part of the deterministic SEIR model. Firstly, the system noise are added in two main parts. Uh, the first part we have at the noise is the new infectious process. So here we have the new infectious process follows a Poisson distribution. And the mean value of the Poisson distribution is the value that we calculate the new infectious in the original SEIR model, which is beta IS divided by the n total population and the times a very small time interval of delta t. So, so, so now we can have the new infectious process follows a Python distribution. And the second part is we have the here, the beta, beta represents the infectious contact rate. So we, we here have the infectious contact rate um, dynamically changed. Um, so how to do this? We have add, a pink noise to, to the transformation of the low end beta. Okay, so here the beta is the infectious contact rate, which means beta equals contact rate times the uh, transmission probability. And we know that the beta should be greater than zero, which means the beta located in uh, interval from zero to infinity. But, um, to add the system noise, we needed to do a trick thing is we needed to map the beta uh, from, from the interval from zero to infinity to transform it to log beta, um, which we all transform it located in the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we can add the pink noise to the transform the low end beta. So here, here, by doing this, we can have the beta dynamically changed and have some noise. And the third part is we have simulated the reporting process of the measles. By simulating the reporting process of the measles, we have um, import a new uh, a parameter. Uh, here we label that CR. So the CR is the report rate it's the monthly reported rate of the measles. 
So, so finally, uh, we can calculate the monthly report of the cases of the measles. Similar as the beta here, we, we have also do a transformation, transform the, the reporting rate of CR, which originally located in the interval from zero to one, by, by using the, um, the logit function, we can map the CR from zero to one interval to the interval of uh, negative uh, infinity to positive infinity. And then we can add the pink noise to, 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 to the logit CR. Okay, so by doing this, we can finally use the model to calculate the monthly reported cases of measles. And we already know that we have the empirical data of the monthly reported cases of measles. So now we can use the particle filtering algorithm to compare the model estimated monthly reported cases to the empirical data of the monthly reported cases from 1921 to 1956. Okay, so this is the structure of the aggregate population model. And we have to do another um, model the measles particle filtering model is we stratify the population to two age groups, um, child and adult. So um, although the here the plot seems kind of complex compared with the aggregate model, but actually um, this, this stratified model structure is quite similar as the aggregate model structure. So uh, what we have done is Firstly, we also based on the SEIR model. So based on the SEIR deterministic model, we have defined, divided the SEIR model into two age groups, child and adult. And then we have added noise to the two main parts. The first part is we similarly, we have the new infectious follows a Poisson distribution. And also we have added noise in the process of uh, calculating the compact matrix between the child and the adult age group. And the, the third part is similarly, we have added the, um, the pink noise to the parameter of the reporting rate. So finally, we can use the age stratified model, can calculate the monthly reported cases of the children age group and the monthly reported cases of the adult age group. And also we, we have the empirical data set of the monthly reported cases of the whole age of the whole population. And also we have the yearly reported cases of the child and the adult age group separately. So we can use the particle filtering algorithm to compare the model estimated result with the empirical data set. Okay, so by, by running the particle filtering model uh, across the whole time frame from 1921 to 1956, across the 32 years, we have generated the results. In, in, in uh, analyzing the results of the measles model, uh, so the first result we can see here is the, is the comparison um, of the discrepancy between the model results and the, the empirical data set. So here we have use the average root mean square error to, to calculate the discrepancy between the model estimated result and the empirical data set. To, um, and the, our goal of this research is to, to seek whether the particle filtering model helps to improve the accuracy of uh, tracing uh, and the monitoring the, the the, the transmission and the outbreaks. So we have performed seven models. Uh, here we have to do two deterministic model and, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, seven model and the five particle filtering model. Okay, so for the first model named the pure aggregate model, which is a simple, which is simply an SEIR measles model with all the parameter values uh, get from a previous published paper. And in the second one, the calibrated aggregate model, it is also a deterministic model, a deterministic SEIR model, but the, 
the parameter of the contact rate is calibrated by incorporating the empirical data we, we already have, which is um, with the Saskatchewan reported cases from 1921 to 1956. And then we have uh, performed five particle filtering models. The first particle filtering model is the particle filtering model only incorporate the aggregate population structure. And the rest of four is the particle filtering model incorporating the age stratified model structure. In the age stratified model structure, we have divided the model into like two kinds of uh, dimensions. Okay, so the first dimension is we have divided the, 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 the model that we, we, we have the two age groups divided into age. So in the, for the first category is we have divided the age in five, which means uh, for all the people under five, they are located in the age, um, age group of a child. And for the people all equal and greater than five, they are located in another um, age group of adult. For the second group is we divided the, the age groups in the age of 15. Okay, so I, I, I see a question is, can you please go over what pure aggregate model is? Oh, ha, yeah, sure. So, okay. Uh, okay. So the pure aggregate model is simply, sorry, I, yeah, my apologize. I didn't plot it. So actually a pure aggregate model is simply an SEIR model. You can ignore all those, um, uh, stochastic part. It is simply an SEIR model. And here, um, the, the new infectious process from S to E is simply beta I S divided by N. So yeah, so, so yeah, in general, it is an SEIR model that we have original before. Um, I think if you have questions, me, me, okay, you're welcome. Yeah, you can also speak out. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, okay, so for the particle filtering model, um, yeah, so we have um, performed four particle filtering model, and uh, firstly, um, um, we, we divided the, the age groups uh, in five or in 15, and in the second category is um, uh, for the particle filtering model of age five monthly is in this particle filtering model, we only incorporate the monthly reported cases, the empirical data set of the monthly reported cases across the whole, um, whole population. And for the second one, the age five both is, is the model structure is the same, but we have incorporated more empirical data set, which means we have incorporated three empirical data set. We have incorporated the monthly reported cases across the whole population. And also we have incorporated the yearly reported cases of the child and the adult age group um, separately. Similarly, as the uh, particle filtering age 15 monthly uh, model, which is only incorporate the monthly reported empirical data, but the model is uh, the two age group is divided in age 15. And the second one is the two age group is divided in age 15, but we have incorporated all three empirical data set. Okay, so by comparing the discrepancy between, um, between the determin deterministic model and the particle filtering model, and also, uh, across different particle filtering models, we can have two main observations. So for the first observation is the, we can see that the discrepancy of the particle filtering model have reduced by a factor of two comparing with the deterministic model uh, by calibrated um, parameter values of a contact rate. So which means the particle filtering model can highly improve the accuracy in, um, in tracing and estimating um, the reported cases. And the second observation is across all the particle filtering model, here we can see that the, um, the particle filtering model, which 
uh, we have used the age structure, the population, we have used the age structure model and uh, the two age groups are divided in age 15 and the incorporate all three empirical data set one have the minimum discrepancy model, which means the particle filtering model age 15 both is the most accurate model. Okay, so now let's see the second category of our results is, which is the, visualiz the visualization results of the model output and the empirical data set. So the upper figure here shows the model, re the comparison between the model results and the empirical data set of the calibrated model. So here the red line is the empirical data set uh, of the monthly reported cases. And the blue line is the model estimate, is the model result of the calibrated SEIR model. So we can see that the model can, can trace the outer bricks at the beginning, but then with time going on that we know that for the, for the deterministic model, it is kind of uh, goes to more stable, which means it is kind of uh, more difficult to trace the outbreaks uh, if we run the model in a quite a longer time frame. So in the lower plot is the uh, comparison between the model results between the particle filtering model results and the empirical data set. Here, uh, the, the, the red dot here, you can see the red dot. The red dot is the empirical data of the monthly reported cases across the whole population. And the, the blue, the, the, you can see the blue is something like the blue bars. The blue bars plot it's like some blue bars. So the, so, so the blue part is the 2D histogram of, of the particle filtering models result. I think we, we have already know from the session that the particle filtering models results is a posterior distribution that is estimated by, uh, by many particles. I'm not sure, like, here is 5,000 particles. And uh, here, here to, 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 um, to, so, so here we, that's why we use the 2D histogram to plot the particle filtering model result. And uh, I think for in, um, in a fixed time, in a fixed time, we can see here the, the blue, this blue bar is kind of, uh, can represent the distribution of the particle filtering model estimated results. And um, uh, I, I think a, a simple method to understand this figure is the particle filtering model think that um, there is a higher probability that the results located in a darker blue area because in a darker blue area, there means uh, there are more particles located in the darker blue part. So in the lower figure, we can see that the empirical data, the empirical data set, the red, the uh, which means the red dot, uh, most of the red dots are located in the darker blue part of the. Uh, particle filtering model results, which also means that the particle filtering model can trace and estimate the, the, the monthly reported cases quite accurately. So compared with the deterministic uh, calibration model and the particle filtering model, we can also see that the particle filtering model can trace um, the transmission and the outer bricks much better than Hello? The... Oh, hi. Hi. Um, sorry to interrupt you. I just um, I do have a question about the when you said the particle filtering model. Uh -huh. First yeah. of all, there's someone who asked a question before me. I think I believe oh. that was Maya. Yeah. And then the second the second point that I wanted to ask is, so we see that you have um, the density of the blue it corresponds to the number of particles that actually fit the observed data. Mm -hmm. My question is, when you set up 
the the model initially mm -hmm. um, is the number of particles something that you choose yourself is it deterministic or um how did you go about that oh yeah so your question is like how to 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 how many particles we will we will use to do the particle filtering model Correct. Right? Yes. yes oh yeah so yeah um so uh firstly is in this research i have used five thousand particles so normally i think so uh have um um uh, a larger particle size can help us to generate a, a more accurate result. But it's something like a trade-off because if we have a larger particle filtering size, then the model will run more slowly and we need more computer resource to run the model. So, so it's something like a trade-off is, we, we hope we have in, enough particles to run the model to generate a relatively accurate result. And um, normally is if the if the state space is bigger, then we usually need a larger particle um, size. Since in the in the measles model, uh, we only use the SEI, we, we have used a kind of a simple structure, which is model structure, which is SEIR model. Um, that means in the like in the aggregate particle filtering model, the state space is is I think is quite is not that big. It's maybe a little bit small. Um, the the state space only include like six variables: S, E, I, R, the uh, and the dynamic variable of a beta, the infectious transmission rate, and and the, the sorry the the infectious contact rate and the CR, the reporting rate. So that's why here we only use 5,000 particles. Um, yeah, so this, I, I, and the second question is, may I know which program you, for the figure? Oh, um, so this figure is, is the 2D histogram plot, which is a built-in, uh, uh, a built-in, uh, library or a built-in tool which can directly be used in the software of any logic. So that means the any logic can plot the such figures directly. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think these are the two questions. And uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, so uh, here here we show, here, these two figures show the particle, particle, sorry, particle filtering models result and the uh, empirical data set. Um, here, the, uh, the empirical data set is the yearly reported cases of the children age group and the adult age group. So the upper one is the comparison between the particle filtering models result, which is all, also the blue, the 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 blue like a blue bar plot and the red line is the empirical data set of the yearly child of the yearly reported cases of the child age group and the lower one is the adult age group and i think this is the model that divided the child and the age group in the age of uh, 15 also we can see that the particle filtering model can can also accurately estimate the two age groups reported cases. Okay, so, so the previously, the previous part is the, um, the results compared um, of the results by comparing the particle filtering model results and the empirical data set we already have. And the second part is we show that the particle filtering uh, model and the particle filtering algorithm can estimate the latent state of a dynamic models. I think in the session, uh, we have already introduced that one of a, a quite a powerful thing for the particle filtering algorithm is the particle filtering algorithm can estimate and the ground the state space of a, a dynamic system. And here, so here we can see that this is the plot 
of the latent state that is estimated by the particle filtering model of a measles. So here is the latent state of um, the age group of children. So we can see that the particle filtering model is quite sure of um, the latent state of the susceptible infect infectives recovered and the exposure of the children age group across the whole time frame. And uh, also these four figures shows the latent state uh, of the adult age group. So similarly, the particle filtering model is also quite sure of, um, uh, of the latent state of the susceptible infectives recovered and the exposure uh, latent state of the, uh, uh, of the adult age groups. So, so those eight figures shows that the particle filtering model is quite sure um, to estimate and ground the latent state of the age stratified measles model, where we divided two age groups, adult and the children. Okay, so the third re so the third category of the result is we show the 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 performance of the particle filtering model in predicting um, in predicting the future outbreaks. We have to do four categories of uh, the experiment. So for the first category of the experiment is we use the particle filtering model predicting from the first or second time point. So one time point is one month. It means we projecting at the first or second month when an uh, outbreak is just beginning. So here we have to do two experiments. We can see that uh, for, so the red line indicates the start date of the projection. And, uh, and the before, before the red line, which is, means before the projection started, we have incorporated the empirical data, which is the red dot here. We have uh, incorporated those empirical data set in the particle filtering model and that help us to ground the model. But when the pr prediction starts, then we only run the model. We only run the, um, the system dynamic model, uh, which is the state space model in the particle, fil in the particle filtering. And uh, we, without to incorporate all of those empirical data set. That's why here in the plot, we have, have the, uh, empirical data set is labeled in black, which means although we have plotted those empirical data set here, but those empirical data are not incorporated in the particle filtering model during projection. But we can see that here, until here, the particle filtering model is already um, trained and grounded by the uh, empirical, data, empirical data set that have been incorporated. And then when projection starts, the particle filtering model is able to project, predict forward. Here is about, I think, two to three years, maybe two years uh, accurately to predict whether there will be an outbreak or not outbreak in the following two years. So in the first category is the particle filtering model is able to predict that, that in the near future, one to two years, there will be an outbreak. And the second category is, uh, what if the projection is starts in the peak of an outbreak? And also similarly, we have to do two experiments. All of those two experiments shows that the particle filtering model is able to project in the peak of the outbreak starts, the projection is starts in the peak of an outbreak. And then the, the particle filtering model successfully projects to that in the near, in the future, the outbreak will be decreased. Um, accurately. And the third category is the projection starting from an end of an outbreak. So here, here is the projection starting from this end of this uh, outbreak. And the second one is here, we also have kind of an end of a small outbreak. And uh, all of those two experiments also shows that 
the particle field tree model is successfully projected. Uh, we're starting at the end of our outbreak. The particle field tree model successfully project that there will be no outbreaks in the new in, in the near future, based on these two examples. And the fourth, the fourth category of the projection is we pre we predicting before before um next outbreak, which means when the projection starts, if we only observe the empirical data set, it is difficult for us to, to see that there will be an outbreak in the future. But the particle, but the particle filtering model can, can predict that in the, in the future, there is an outbreak. So which means when we're predicting before the next outbreak, the particle filtering model is also successfully predict the future, the future outbreaks, especially the first one. So the first one, I think the particle filtering model is quite sure in a near few years, I'm not sure, maybe five to six years, is, is quite sure of, um, uh, of the near future years result and the project the outbreaks here successfully. Okay. Excuse so me. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. a quick question here? Yeah. I think that this slide is very impressive, mm -hmm. but I do wonder um, what is the time point that you choose? I think the previous ones where you show the mm -hmm. performance of the prediction results, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty clear how the time point was decided. But before the next outbreak, what does that mean? It means that oh. um, you already know something about the future data? Oh, here. Mm -hmm. oh, here. How is that chosen? Oh, here, yeah. So I think here, okay, the difference be between this one and I think the first one, maybe it is kind of confused with this one. Since in the first one is, if we only observe the empirical data set, we may kind of have a feeling that there, there, there may be an outbreak will be come in the future because, um, because when the prediction starts, we can see that there is also a first or second time 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 point shows there is an increase of the reported cases of measles. Like here, uh, there there is an increase, and the second one is here. Here have a red dot, which means there there is already have a, maybe a trend shows that um, the reported cases it is increasing, but in the fourth. Oh, sorry. In, 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 in this, in the fourth category of the projection is if we only observe the empirical data set, we, we cannot see such trend. Is we don't know whether there will be an outbreak in the future or not, because if we only see the empirical data set, maybe there is no sign to show that there will be an outbreak in the future because we, we, we can see here is before the projection starts, the, the empirical data set shows the daily reported cases near zero here. And then in the second one is here is also near zero. So, so that means it is difficult to us to, so, so there is no sign of the empirical data set to show whether there will be an outbreak in the future or not. But um, by, but, but the particle filtering model can also successfully uh, project the outbreaks in the near future. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, this is the uh, this is the answer of your. This is exactly what I was asking. Thank oh, yeah. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So until now is the projection results, and the next part is the. The, the results shows that the particle filtering algorithm can also uh, perform the interventions, the intervention simulations. So here we have do two um, experiment of the two, two exper experiment of interventions. The first category of the intervention is we simulated the quarantine intervention, which is we simply by decreasing the uh, parameter value of the contact rate. So that means uh, uh, when the projection process starts, 
of the particle filtering model, we decrease the estimated uh, contact rate to simulate the uh, intervention of uh, the quarantine intervention. So the upper figure shows the result of uh, if only decrease the contact rate to 20 percentage. And the second one is uh, shows uh, what if decrease the contact rate into 50 per, uh, percentage. Then the particle filtering model can show um, what is the uh, what would be the, the transmission and the outbreak like in the future if we do some intervention. So we can see that if we, if we are able to decrease the contact rate in, 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 into half <clears throat> uh, compared with the, uh, the projection or the intervention stats, then we can, we can let the outbreak um, um, uh, disappear since we know that there should be an, an outbreak uh, in the empirical data set. But uh, after doing the intervention, we can see that the outbreak is disappear. So this result shows that we can use the particle filtering model to simulate some intervention simulations. So this is the first one. The, the second one is, uh, we use the particle filtering model to simulate the, the, uh, the vaccination interventions. Um, so the, the upper figure shows what about we have 20 percentage of the susceptible population vaccinated when the, when the projection or when the intervention starts. The lower figure shows what if we have 50 percentage of the susceptible people vaccinated um, when the projection or intervention uh, starts. This also shows that if we have, like here, if we have 50 percentage of um, susceptible people vaccinated, then we can also have the, um, the, the future outbreak disappear. So this shows, um, so this two simple uh, category of experiment shows the particle filtering model can also successfully simulate the intervention scenarios at different time. Okay, so till now is all the results I have done for the particle filtering model. And, uh, and the next part is for, it is using the particle filtering model the particle filtering algorithm to simulate the pertussis model. Uh, actually, all the, um, the, the, the process of the pertussis model is quite similar to the measles model. The only difference is the model structure of the pertussis model is kind of more complex um, and different with the measles model. So I think in this part, due to the time restriction, I. I will introduce this quite uh, more faster. Uh, um, and I will only introduce the different part of the part of the Pertussis particle filtering model compared with the measles particle, uh, uh, measles particle filtering model. So here for the Pertussis particle filtering model, uh, we have done four particle filtering models. Similar as the measles model, we have uh, down the aggregate population model. And uh, then we have done an uh, age stratified model by dividing the population into two age groups. Um, and the third and the fourth particle filtering model is we have divided the population into 32 age groups, but with a different uh, method calculated the contact matrix. And this is the model structure of the Pertussis model. We can see that the Pertussis model is kind of uh, more complex by the Mesos model. So it is, so here, um, so the one thing is the Pertussis model have a larger state space compared with the Mesos model. We know that in the Mesos model, we only use SEIR uh, model, which means there are only four state space, SEIR, but here, in the Pertussis model, um, the state space is kind of larger. I think it's kind of at least twice of the measles model. Since here we have divided the infectives into three different categories, four infectives, mild infectives, and the weekly 
effective. And also we have divided the recovered population into four, four categories uh, based on the different uh, uh, immunity uh, level. Okay, so this is the pertussis model structure. And similar as the um, measles model, we have at what we have uh, down for the particle filtering model is we have added some system noise to, to the deterministic model. Then we can generate the state space model for the pertussis particle filtering model. So this is the model structure for the aggregate population uh, model is similarly, we have added the noise to the new infectious process here, but the new infectious process in the part in the pertussis model is it located in three parts, uh, which means for the uh, for the people who have recovered but with lower immunity, they they are able to reinfect it again. Okay, so so this is for the aggregate model, and uh, this this structure is for sorry this structure is for the age stratified model by only dividing the uh, population into two age groups children and adults and the, the structure three is we have divided the model um, into 30 the whole population into 32 age groups okay so so similar as the measles model we we can see the pertussis model's result is by comparing the particle filtering model and the deterministic calibrated model, we can see that the particle filtering model can decrease the discrepancy by a factor of 1.6. And uh, here the model of uh, dividing the age groups into, dividing the population into two age groups show a minimum discrepancy re result which means uh, in this research, the, the, the pertussis model by dividing the total population into two age groups have the most high uh, accuracy. But I think I need to have a note here is, uh, I think this is also related to a previous question of the particle size in a particle filtering model. Since when I have uh, performed the pertussis model, um, and uh, uh, to, to able to compare all the particle filtering model. So I have all the particle filtering model have the same particle size. The particle size I choose is 10,000. But we, we know that for the particle filtering model that divided the whole, divide the, the, the whole population into 32 age groups, that means these two particle filtering model have a much larger latent space compared with the model with the two age groups and the aggregate model. So maybe for these two for for this two particle filtering model, ten thousand particle is a little bit smaller for this two particle filtering model. That's why the discrepancy is is kind of. Uh, uh, bigger than the two age group model. So that that may be a reason. So this may be some future work we need to do to, to, to seek the answer for this question. But in this research, if we have the same particle size of 10,000 particles, uh, we get the result is the particle filtering model with the two age groups have the most smallest uh, at the minimum discrepancy, and this two age group particle filtering model uh, have the highest accuracy. Okay, so this is also the comparison between the model results and uh, the empirical data set. Since this is quite similar to the Mesos model, I will uh, go over this part quite uh, quickly. So we can see that this part also clearly show that in the pertussis model, the particle filtering model is also better trace and estimate the, the, the monthly reported cases, which is much better than the deterministic calibrated model. Here is the, um, the, the, the comparison between the model results and the empirical data with the two age groups model. So the upper is for the children and the, the lower one is for the adult age group. And this figure shows the, 
um, this picture shows the comparison between the model results and the empirical data of uh, the six different age groups. Since we have a two particle filtering model have divided the age group into 32 age groups. Um, although in the particle filtering model, in the model we have divided the, po the population into 32 age groups, but because in the empirical data side that we can only uh, separate the, the empirical data set into six different age groups. So finally, we can only show the comparison between the model results and the empirical data in the six different age groups. By, by, by comparing the model results and the empirical data set, we can also see that the, the particle filtering model can estimate um, different age, age groups reported yearly reported cases quite accurately. Okay, so this shows the latent state of the Patasis model, the, the, Patas, the Patasis particle filtering model that is uh, grounded by the particle filtering algorithm. So this is the latent state of the children age group, and this is the latent, latent state of the adult age group. Okay, I have a question. Okay. I don't understand the decision on select 32 age groups. Can you explain why this level of granularity? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this question. Yeah. So, the reason we select 32 age group is um, uh, we have so. Mm -hmm. So the model structure, we have used this model structure based on one of a previous, one of a previous research. I think which, yeah, here. So which is kind of a quite uh, famous research by Hathcote, I think. So this model is published in 1997. So, so a quicker answer is in this previous research, which, and in this research, you have provide the, sorry, provide the deterministic model. In this research, the original deterministic model is already divided into 32 age group. And in this research by Haskell 1997, uh, they have they have also pro provide the uh, contact matrix. So I think that's the reason that we 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 just borrow the the model that is um, done by Hathcote in 1997 as as our base model of uh, the uh, age stratified model, and the, in the original model it have 32 age groups. So that's why we also uh, use 32 age groups. I think that is one reason, and the second reason is we would like to check what is the particle filtering model's performance if the state space is relatively bigger. Since it's something like in the 32 age groups, in the 32 age group model, so the state space is kind of uh, like 32 times bigger compared with the aggregate um, population model. And uh, I think the results shows that the particle filtering model is also performs not bad, maybe kind of a good, even with a relatively a larger state space. And uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Amount of this is not a lot of definition. How's that? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so this is the latent state. And also we have performed the similar analysis like the, uh, the, pro the, the projection of the uh, near future outbreaks of the Patasis model. So, uh, so uh, this is, these two figures shows predicting from the first or second time plots before an outbreak starts. We can see that the particle filtering model can successfully also can su successfully project the near future outbreaks. This is uh, the model successfully project the 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 decrease uh, stage of the outbreak. Okay, I think I have a question. 
Uh, can you elaborate as to what you mean when you say latent space of um, pathesis? How else would you see in alternative if you're reporting? To? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the yeah, the latent space of um, uh, pathesis. Okay. So I think yes. Um, yeah, in the system dynamic modeling. Uh, yeah, here the the latent space, which is means the latent state of a system dynamic model. So I think what you can think of, um, you can think, I think maybe quite an easy way to, to think of what is a latent space in the infectious disease modeling or compartmental modeling is like how many, how many groups we have divided. Uh, we we have divided the 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 total population um, in in the model. So so it's like here, in the aggregate pathesis model, we have divided the whole population into one, two, three, four, five. I think this is uh, eight, right? We 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 have separated the the whole population into eight uh, compartments. So susceptible, fully infective, and the four recovered different pop population category and uh, infective mild and the infective weekly. So I think this is maybe the, the way that I can think of to, to explain what is the latent space of the um, the latent space or the latent state of the particle filtering model. Um, so that's why I have mentioned that in the aggregate population model, the latent state is quite not that big, it's quite a small, since here it is only eight. But for the in the two age groups, the latent state is 16. We have 16 states. And uh, in the 32 age groups, the latent state is eight times 32. So which is much, much larger than, than the aggregate uh, population model and um, two age group population model. Yeah, oh, thank now, you. And, and you might say, I mean, uh, we were actually from each of our major stakeholders from, from each of the major classes of health systems we, we dealt with, we were asked to <clears throat> provide a, sort of a, uh, a uh, lay friendly sort of explanation. And, and one thing we recurrently <clears throat> did from that was, you know, to talk about the difference between um, fitting the curve of say the number of cases or what have you versus these approaches, which all seek to estimate, you know, the underlying situation. But as Xiao Yan says, what we characterized as kind of the underlying situation uh, varied for each of these models she's looking at here, like whether we break it into two age groups or into 32 age groups, you know, um, those are different characterizations of the underlying situation. But the, the essential point here, when talking about estimating the latent state, we're talking about estimating an underlying situation. And then there's a separate question about how do we how in a model do we characterize that underlying situation? That's more of a, a technical set of questions. But I think for the for the public, they're often and and for you know our chief medical health officer who's consuming these reports every day for uh, for years. Um, you know what they're looking to understand is oh this is a a model that seeks to understand the underlying situation um, based on the data each day, kind of interpret it in light of theory of, of how COVID-19 works, and then, you know, take, take that, take that situation into account and projection forward. I hope that's, that's helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So for the particle uh, filtering pathesis model, it can also success successfully estimate the, those, sorry, latent state. Um, so here is for the children age group, and uh, and this figure shows 
um, to the adult age group. So I think maybe I can have a quick explanation. It's, it's something like here. So if we say, I think this is for the uh, R1, um, R1 uh, compartments uh, of the pedatis model is the recovered, the recovered population in the stage one. So here we can see that maybe after of a time uh, 300, then the particle filtering model kind of holding mainly two high hypotheses. So it have one hypothesis is, is thought that R1 is in, should the value should be follows the first line here. And the second the hypothesis is it maybe follows uh, in the second line here. I'm not sure, maybe if we have more empirical data set or something, we can, we can ground the latent space more accurately to finally have the particle filtering model can, 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 can only choose one hypothesis finally. Maybe we can do that. But currently, with the current model and with the current empirical data set um, for some latent state, maybe there is so the particle filtering model have more than one hypothesis, something like here. But in general, that we can see that the particle filtering model can, can estimate um, and can ground the latent state quite uh, deterministically. Okay, so here is also the projection results. I, 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 I think uh yeah so this is the third category of the projection results um predicting at the end of an outbreak and this is predicting before the next outbreak starts so all of the projection experiments shows that the potassium particle filtering model is also successfully can project whether there will be an outbreak or non-outbreak break in the near future Okay, so this is also two very similar intervention results, similar as the measles model. So I will not take much time to introduce this. So uh, the first one is the experiment uh, simulated the quarantine intervention, similarly by decreasing the parameter of the contact rate. And the second one is we can use the particle filtering model to simulate the uh, intervention of uh, the vaccination in intervention by um, uh, by uh, uh, moving some by moving the population in the susceptible or the recovered one recovered two stage compartment move to the next stage. Then we can use uh, this kind of very simple trick to use the particle filtering pedasis model to simulate the intervention. Um, scenarios. Okay, so finally, um, by 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 this work, uh, we have got the uh, following conclusion. The first one is the particle filtering algorithm can mitigate the significant weakness and the simplifications related with the aggregate particle compartmental models and the noisy empirical data. Secondly. The particle filtering models offer strong performance in estimating the, the outbreak pattern and uh, also predicting the, the future trend of the outbreaks. Um, the third one is a very key benefit of the particle filtering model is the particle filtering model and the particle filtering algorithm is able to estimate the latent state of the system. And, um, and we can see that the, the particle filtering model's result can significantly reduce the accuracy with the discrepancy by 2 and 1.6. So finally, um, the experiments of uh, interventions indicates that um, the particle filtering model is also able to evaluate the interventions by, alter, by simply alternating the model parameters. And uh, yeah, like Dr. Osgood uh, 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 introduced uh, at the beginning that all those two work can be found online. The particle, the particle filtering model of the measles are published in PLOS1 and the, the particle filtering model of the pedasis 
is currently is also um, can be found in in the preprint uh, repository of uh, Biochive. Okay, yeah. So this is my uh, presentation of my work today. Thank you so much. I'm not sure. Uh, do you have further questions? Thank you so much, uh, Xiaoyan. Yeah, are there any uh, questions people would like to ask? Xiaoyan, I know you did some work um, on AUC curves as well. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, here I have the slides, but uh, because of the time, I didn't introduce this. Okay. Uh, maybe, worth, maybe worth mentioning this because I know uh, um, it relates a little bit to some things Yuan was talking about yesterday, actually. So I would, oh. I would encourage you to actually maybe show show something there oh, she did yeah. show an AUC curve and this uh, this could be related to that yeah oh okay sure so yeah so I think uh, this work is we have we, we, we have performed a classification um, um, research of a classify whether there will be an outbreak or non outbreak with sorry whether there is an outbreak occur in the next month based on the particle filtering models projection result so uh so what we have done this research is so firstly we get the next month's projection result of uh, each month um by incorporating the particle filtering algorithm and then um we we have set a threshold by classifying whether by classifying or defining uh, what is an outbreak. So the, the definition of the outbreak here is if the monthly reported cases is greater than the mean plus one point of time, 1.5 times the standard deviation, then we say that there, it is an outbreak. If, if the monthly reported case uh, is lower than this thresh threshold, we see that uh, in this month, it is not an outbreak. So, so by, by, by defining such a threshold, we can, we can uh, um, uh, separate um, each month's, um, each month's reported cases to be in uh, outbreak category or non-outbreak category. Uh, so the uh, the third thing is we use the ROC curve, and and um, uh, and the AU, the AUC the area under the ROC curve to to calculate the accuracy of uh, our classification result. So this is the classification result of the Mesos model. So um, uh, the left figure is the ROC curve of the, the, the classification of the outbreak or non-outbreak. So um, the area under the ROC curve is 0.89, um, which means the accuracy of the projection is 0 0.893. And the second is we have, we have plotted the uh, medium and the mean of the, uh, so, so, uh, so here I think we have uh, plotted the medium and the mean result of the particle filtering models result. So, so, so the y y axis is the model result of a me of a each month's model result. Since we know the model result is 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 particle filtering um, models re result, that means we have. Um, like if we have 5,000 particles in this particle filtering uh, model, then for each time we can generate like, I'm not sure, since we can sample it, we can sample 1,000 re results or we can sample 5,000 results. So anyway, for the model result, we have, it is a distribution, it is sample of a distribution. So we have multiple results. That's why we calculate the medium and the mean of the model result. And in the X axis, it indicates the empirical result, the, the empirical data of each month's reported cases. So uh, by yeah, so by plotting this 
figure, this scatter plot of the model results and the empirical data, we can see that the slope is 0.8. So, I mean, if, if the y-axis is exactly the same as the x-axis, which means if the model result is exactly equals to the empirical data, the, the slope should be 1.0. So here- and Shaoyan, it's yeah. worth emphasizing, when you say model results, you mean prediction results, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the prediction results, the next month's prediction results, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so this, the slope here is 0.8. Um, and the, for the Patasis model, we have to do a similar analysis is um, the, accurate, the accuracy of the Patasis projection results uh, is 0.913. And the here, here the, the slope of the Patasis model is uh, 0 0.5. But also we, we can see that most, most of, um, of the, 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 the scatter plot are also located in the, like in the di diagonal area, which is the slope one equals one area. Yeah. And um, just to clarify here, we're looking at um, the um, particle filtering with the mm -hmm. two or 32. Oh, I think here is both with the two age groups result. Since I think finally uh, I do the projection results is I have used the the model with the most most the smallest uh, discrepancy, and uh, I think in the measles and in the particle filtering particle fil measles and the part sorry measles and the potassium particle filtering models, uh, the two age group model is the minimum discrepancy one. So I use the minimum discrepancy models projection result to do such classification research. Yeah, so I think, yeah. So I think, yeah. So this is this uh, small research of the classification of the projection results whether there will be an outbreak or non-outbreak for the particle filtering model. Um, I'm not sure. Do we have another questions? Yeah, any other questions people would like to ask? Okay, okay uh, if not, uh, let's give uh, Shayan a hand here. Um, I'll turn off the...